Hello, Patrick here. I just thought I'd give you a quick talk through how to put on records for the Ennis project, the Exmoor Non-Native Invasive Species project. So in the background here, you can see the iNaturalist app, which is uh, the main thing we're going to be using this year um, to take these records. Um, and this is where you can do most of the work from. Um, so to put your records in, um, well, first of all, you need to join the Ennis project. So if you look just up, sort of just up in there, um, we'll click on there, and now you can see just there, it says projects. So we'll go into the projects. So here we are, we're into the projects. And as you can see, um, the NS project has come up here straight away for me. Um, if it doesn't, there are two things you can do. First of all, you can look in the nearby projects um, to see if the location for where you are will let you find it. Failing that, you can come up into here and use this little search function here and then search for either Ennis or Exmoor and you'll find all of our projects in there. Once you click on the Ennis project, that will open it up. If you're not part of the Ennis project already, if you've not already joined it, then just here where, it, for me, it says leave, it will say join. You need to click on that join button. Um, the news and the about don't have much in at the moment, but that will be updated. So you can come back and check in those spots um, for any updated information about the project as we carry on. Um, we'll just come back a little way. And so once you've joined the project, you can now add one of your records to it. So if we come into here, you see we've got a new observation just down there. Or if you go back to your home page, you'll see there's a little plus button just down there and you can add a record with that as well. Now I'm not on site at the moment but I've taken some photographs so I'm going to not take a photograph but I'm going to choose an image. If you're out on site then obviously you go to take photograph but let's for the moment just go to choose image. This will open up my um, folder in the background here and there's a few of my pictures of various things that have been going on. A branch has come down Let's scroll down through some of those. Um, so yeah, here we have it. Um, let's import that photograph first. This is some Monbrecia that was growing down on the edge of the bar. So we'll open that up. Now, if you've got an internet connection, then it will straight away um, start trying to guess what it is. And actually, to be fair, my picture is not very good good and it's not really got it at all a closer up pitch would get it much better um, but because it hasn't found it i'm going to come into here and if you're offline you'll have to do this anyway and i'm going to start searching for monbrecia and there we go we've got the um, monbrecia and it's this top monbrecia we want crocrosmia Cross, Crosvia, whatever that is. I'm not very good at that bit. <laughs> um, but that's the one we want, not Ponce, Monbrecia, or any of the others, but just play Monbrecia up here. So we'll select that as our end identification. Um, you can add anything into notes if you think that that is needed. Um, it's automatically put in the time and date that was when the photograph was taken, and it's put a lat and long that was stored as sort of on the geo positioning on the photograph as well. Um, if you're out on site and your location services are enabled, then it will put your positioning for where you are as you're taking the picture. Now, I'm just looking at that and it wasn't actually right in the middle of the river. It was off on the bank just here. So I'm just going to move it about two metres to the side. That's not bad for um, guessing the location. It's always worthwhile doing that. If you, op if you put in a record when you've got phone signal for the area that you're about to do and perhaps don't save it, um, but open up, click on the location. You're then able to load the map in and you can scroll through the route you're going to do. And that will then enable um, the map to be um, loaded onto your phone. Now, the most important part for this is now to come down here and you see this bit at the bottom is add to projects. So we'll click on add to projects and a few projects that I'm involved here and the one we want to do is the Exmoor Non-Native Invasive Species Project. Now again, the first time you do this, it's worthwhile doing it online um, to make sure that you get everything that you need in place.
um, just make sure once you've once you've done it online once then the questions that this brings up will be saved onto your phone so three questions that it then asks um, was it on the left or right side of the bank as you look downstream so imagine you're on a boat floating down the river with the current um, it was on the left hand bank so that is correct so I'll go for left um, all of these are required questions for it to be entered into the database obviously if you're looking for something that isn't on a river um, for the river bank side we also have not applicable um, density um, it was um, one in well over where it was I'm going to say it was high but it was over less than one square meter um, and you've got various options up there up to more than 20 square meters if you're looking at something like Monbrecia and it spread down a large section of the river valley then monitor it in roughly 100 meter sections and say over that 100 meters um, put more than 20 meters squared and put down how dense it was over that 100 meters so there might be very dense patches of it but over the 100 meters it was very low um, and then put the record in like that and then walk on another 100 meters and see what it looks like there if they're still finding more in 100 meters put on another record there so if you're coming down the river and you're not finding any of our target species um, then it's still important to put a record on. So add a record to the project as you go along, but just add it for anything that happens to be grown there, whether it's a blade of grass or if it's a daisy or a whatever happens to be growing on that patch of the river. Every few hundred metres, two, three, four, five hundred metres, whatever, sort of some, something along those lines. If it's a long straight stretch of river, it's not so important. Um, if there's areas that you might be missing out, then make sure that you sort of make it obvious within that the areas you have surveyed and the areas that you haven't um, and then come down answer these questions below as best you can for those species as well and then add it into the project eventually we'll remove those species from the project and we will just be left with our target species but it will enable us to see where you've been and where we need to encourage more volunteers to go now, if you log in to iNaturalist on the internet, onto their web page, you'll be able to go to the Ennis project and you'll be able to see where all the dots are being recorded. So you'll be able to see where someone has recorded, if they recorded there yesterday or if they recorded there three months ago, you'll be able to see that on the map and make decisions about where you want to go. Although we'll be coming on to this a bit more in a minute where I'll show you exactly how we want you to so we'll potentially be assigning you sites so I'll we'll show you a list of sites in a moment that you'll become the lead volunteer for checking that site but feel free also to check other people's sites extra sets of eyes are always useful on the site but you might want to look at the Ennis project like I say just to check when the last time there was somebody walking down there um, it's probably worthwhile leaving a few weeks in between surveys for one particular site so anyway once you've added all of these details, it's on the left bank, it's low density, it's more than 20 metres squared. Um, an important part now then, you still need to tick this little tick symbol up in the top right hand corner. So we'll do that now. That now saves it. And the next important bit is to push that tick and that will then save that record onto the system i'm not going to do that right now because this is a fake record and i don't want it to start polluting the um, the data set as it were um, but that's how you go on and do these bits now the next part of the system is to come in and have a look at where we want you to go surveying so let's go and have a look at that now so you're going to need to log into the volunteer portal if you need uh, you'll need a username and a password to do this most of you should have this already if you don't then contact me um, and we'll um, sort you out so you can get into it or if necessary just talk you through on the phone um, so I'll zoom into here a little bit you need to go to opportunities and opportunity list that will open up the opportunity list and let me move that up to the top here. What you're looking for is this, Ennis Invasive Plant Surveying. 
and click on it to open up and we'll scroll down to here and here is a list of all of the sites that we want checking. You'll see down under this shifts you've got a one to show that there is one place available. We're asking one volunteer to sign up for each route. It doesn't mean to say that you can't do it with your other half, with a friend, whatever, um, but there'll be one volunteer signed up to be doing it. And you'll notice that this one right here has got a zero written next to it, which is the Wimberball Dam to Berry one. That's because we've already got the required number of volunteers searching it. Now, you can still open that up and you can see some of the details of what we're asking people to do and we'll see it says survey from Bridalway as highlighted and then underneath there is a map um, which shows you where to survey um, a pair of binoculars is going to be useful for this one if you click on the map it will open up a new link into our online mapping system um, which will then take you to a map of the area that you can then scroll around. It doesn't then have the highlights on it, but you can reflect between the two. And you can also, on this one, zoom right in um, to get more detail. And once you zoom in far enough, it goes to a different layer. Um, and you can get all of that sort of information to see exactly where the path goes, how close you can get. Um, you'll be able to see little islands like this, which might be good points to try and get advantage of. Um, if you come up here and click these, sort of click the options, you can then look at layers um, and then you can add the 2017 aerial photography layer as well. Let's go back into the main bit. So there we are, you've got the details from there and up at the top it says survey from Bridal Way as highlighted. Down below it says there's a little bit to say that what there's currently no of two opens openings available so you can't add yourself to that one um, but if we go back one more page um, and open up the NS plant surveys again um, you can come down to here and we'll see one that has got spaces so Simmons Bath to Cow Castle for example at the top um, again it's got that marked on um, at the top it says open access land with good paths on left bank, follow the two moors way, land is owned by EMPA, so get as close to the river bank as you safely can. So work your way down there and keep as close to the river as you like. Down below it's got an option here to sign up. Um, once you've signed up to a site we'll contact you, um, make sure that you're aware of any extra details that it might be. Some of the sites you will need to contact the landowner before you can go. Um, some of the descriptions up at the top here that will be evident that you'll need to contact the landowner before attending um, and there may be other instructions um, that go in there for particular sites as well. Some sites we don't actually know the landowners um, so the description may say you need good local landowner knowledge to be able to survey this stretch of river because we need you to go out and find those landowners and we've already tried and failed so we essentially we need people who live locally and know who owns it already um obviously this is not that's not going to be everybody's cup of tea and we have got staff members who will be going through those ones slowly trying to get to the bottom of um, what we can go there and well where we can go there as the year goes on as well most of them aren't in that category most of them you can go to already so there you go we click you can add yourself to the backup list to show you're interested in helping in that one and you can click sign up and then you can withdraw from there as well. So that is how to take part in the Ennis project. If you've got any questions you can contact me by phone or by email, um, go to the Exmoor National Park Authority's website um, or call up our head office um, and try and get hold of Patrick Watts Mabbott and they'll put you through to me. Um, so that's how we're going to be doing the Ennis project this year. Um, like I say, any questions, feel free to get hold of me and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.